2003, X-Men and Spider-Man have enjoyed the big screen treatment, and now it's the Hulk's turn. Exciting. People are interested. Let's see genius scientist Bruce Banner let loose with that monstrous green alter ego of his. Here we go. Wow. Look at that opening weekend. Incredible. People want themselves a slice of that green cake. Mm-hmm. Wow. Look at that second weekend. That's, uh... Well, that's quite the drop there, okay. Wow. That third week is Flopsville. Where did all that sweet audience interest go? It's almost like all those folks who lost two and a bit hours of their lives watching it on that first weekend hated it. And word of mouth sent the film into box office mediocrity where it belonged. Shocking stuff. You see, at the time, it was largely agreed that Hulk was a pretentious mess of a film that was painfully boring given its subject matter is a monstrous Marvel superhero who can level entire cities with sheer brute force. But you see, that was then, and this is now. And in the wake of She-Hulk twerking and trying to pull a Deadpool with that little fourth wall thing, ha 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 ha, and geriatric Mark Ruffalo stinking the joint out with his attempts at being a funny Hulk, fans have gone searching for something more, something serious, something with meaning, something like Ang Lee's Hulk. A horde of these film essayist channels trying to be Roger Ebert part two, giving their unasked for spins on movies from yesteryear everyone else has comfortably moved on from. Hulk came out when I was eight, and I loved playing with this big foam Hulk hand toys that came out, so now I'm going to attempt to convince you the movie ruled. Yeah, no one really cares, thanks. And they're having a mighty big laugh if they think this pile of Nick Nolte's unshowered, overacting ass is the cure. Let's start with a very simple problem here. The endless panelling edits. Good grief! Every scene, every transition, endless parallelograms, constantly reminding you this film is adapted from a comic book. Yes, we get it. Thank you. Ang Lee is a serious filmmaker. He's made a lot of high art, award-winning flicks. So, for him, I dare say this was a fun little novelty project, and he had himself a little too much fun with it on this front. Everyone look at me. I'm making a comic book movie. Eric Banner. Good actor, Chopper, Munich, funny people, all showed a very solid performer with plenty of emotional depth and range. But here, unfortunately, he's not allowed to have much range at all, quickly becoming the most monotonous man in the room. I do understand that Bruce Banner is meant to be a repressed, introverted guy, but he's still also an eccentric genius with a curious outlook on life. Why exactly? Is he written to be the most boring man of all time here? And that repression, let's tackle the biggest narrative issue in the whole film right now. Banner's repressed, tragic past with his father. So for all you comic book lovers out there, I did some research for this video, and Bruce Banner's father, Brian, is a horrible, abusive creep who ruined Bruce's formative years. Okay, fine. I get the film wanted to include that as part of his backstory. Great. Makes sense. But instead of just establishing that dynamic, oh no, the film creates a whole new take on Banner's life and transformation into the Hulk. Crazed father who experimented on him. Adoption. Surprise backstory, unlike any of the source material. The Incredible Hulk is a classic IP and is bad enough that the old TV show completely failed to capture the point of his origin tale. Here though, Having seen a very faithful Spider-Man film adaptation just a year prior smash the box office, the clever clogs behind Hulk decided to wedge their incredibly dull family drama story onto Big Green. The entire movie revolves around this new version of Banner's miserable jerk father, now a loony ex-con with his own superpowers he can turn into bathroom tiles or something, and the detrimental impact he's had on poor Bruce, 
who doesn't even know Ben is his surname for most of the film. Imagine if the next Twilight Guy Batman film revealed Thomas Wayne was alive still, and actually the movie version of Ra's al Ghul this time or something. There should be a policy. Whenever any of these idiot screenwriting hacks who probably worship Moloch and suck dick to get these undeserved gigs for all we know, allegedly. Whenever any of them are in line for a major adaptation of a popular comic book, they should be forced to spend a whole year extensively studying the character from the ground up, reading extensive amounts of the comics before being trusted to adapt it properly. Much better than letting these utter nincompoops force their crappy little indie film ideas no one would watch onto a beloved potential blockbuster level figure. The original Hulk origin tale was a dramatic reflection of the consequence of using one's talents for bad things. Banner, a genius, uses his intellect for weaponry and is taught a grim lesson when he himself becomes a weapon in the process. Here, the gamma-related incident is simply the final straw, conveniently tying into experiments his hideous old man did on him when he was a child. Now look, look, the freak accident was always silly, but this is just convoluted nonsense. And he doesn't even turn into the Hulk on impact, no. He just wakes up in a hospital bed where he continues to exhibit a tragic case of the very, very, very common these days, non-existent personality disorder. Very sad stuff. Now look, it's the Hulk. You know what the Hulk loves to say? Hulk smash, oh yeah. Mass destruction, someone get Michael Bay on line one. Well here, it takes half an hour for Dr. Banner to have his unfortunate freak accident. Then, and here's the real kicker, it's another half hour or so before he has an extremely constipated transformation into his big boy alter ego. And then, beyond an appalling, barely comprehensible fight with some nuclear dogs and a brief fight with the US Army, the Hulk is surprisingly low-key. There are some people out there who think Batman Begins was a very slow-paced film. Let me tell you something. Batman Begins whizzes by like an episode of X-Men 97 compared to this hogwash. And someone explain this to me. Someone explain this. Betty Ross betrays poor Bruce Banner to the US Army. These hoes ain't loyal, all that kind of thing. And yet, later on, just the sight of Betty Ross fixes the Hulk and Banner's all happy to see her. You found me. You weren't that hard to find. Ugh. 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 Ah. Let me tell you something. If Jennifer Connelly betrayed me, like if I was in that situation, my Hulk alter ego would be very angrily smashing her. And before that, the burial would also be smashing her, just in a different but equally noisy way. Anyways... The climax, if you can even call it that, is father versus son, underwater, at night, as Banner's idiot father tries to steal his son's powers or touch him very inappropriately, or maybe both. I wasn't sure what was really going on here. I won't lie to you. It took me a few days to recover from my recent Amsterdam holiday. I was probably still a bit hazy when I watched this. Anyways, they're underwater, and Nick Nolte wants the Hulk's strength so he can finally work up the courage to shower or something. And then the Hulk gives him his sad emotions. Here it is. Here it is. Take it, take it, take it. Take it off! Funnily enough, that was exactly what Harvey Weinstein said to Jennifer Lawrence right before her film career inexplicably took off. Anyways. His father's some bubble of memories. He dies, I think, I hope. Everyone who thought this was good should die, really. Anyway, so Banner's in the water then, seemingly dead, hopefully, or unconscious. Very easy for the US military to pick up right then and there, but miraculously, that doesn't happen. And Banner flees to somewhere in South America, like a Nazi. Oh, and then. <laughs> and then. As if all of that wasn't bad enough. You watched the film, that was bad. You listened to this video, that was even worse. But it's not over yet, no, no. The final scene has some of the absolute worst Spanish ever committed to film, along with a truly hideous fake beard on poor Eric Banner, who, unsurprisingly, 
has largely avoided blockbusters like the plague for the rest of his career to date. Shocking stuff. So yeah, if I were to give this movie a rating out of five, it would be... Minus five stars! Total butchery of a classic Marvel hero. Something that can be said for most films with him in it, bar maybe that first Avengers. That was all right. And let's just quickly look at the Hulk's design. The CGI is not too bad for the time, in fairness. Let's just remember the time it was done in. The shape of the Hulk is decent, but the trousers look painted on. And then, that face. Why is the Hulk Jose Conseco? Could be worse, of course. 2008's Ed Norton was the spitting image of Gordon Brown in his Hulk form. I never want to hear anyone, anyone, complain about the Ruffalo Hulk design ever again. Everything else about it might suck, but that design is gorgeous compared to what came before it. Gorgeous, I tell you. 